But Jay, during those years when Todd was in New York and seemed to be flying so high, there was no indication that he would ever turn to the Lord, but yet you knew about the risk of AIDS. Uh, How did you handle it then? What was your response to him at that time? Oh, I've gone through so many responses. I mean, from uh, absolute grief. Uh, I remembered at that time, I mean, just the, the Word of God uh, became so real to me. You know, I'd, I'd get in the Word and I'd spend hours a day in the Word looking for a Word from God for, for this Son. And God gave me uh, so many words and I'm seeing them all come to pass uh, now. You want to share that with us, the words? Well, in, uh, he was 18, I believe, in 19, well, in 1982. Uh, I, I guess in July or August of 82, I knew God had spoken to me and I hadn't written it in my prayer book, but I went back and put in approximately of June 1982, God told me that Todd would be serving God by the time he was 25 and that he would come to know the Lord in his 24th year. Well, he's he'll be 25 on the 22nd and this video that, that y'all are doing is really um, God's way of answering my prayers. I had thought, I had assumed that if he would be serving God by the time he was 25 that he, you know, wouldn't wouldn't be dying and I don't know if uh, if the Lord's going to heal him or take him on. He thinks that the Lord's going to take him on and he told me today that he wants to, he said, Mom, I want to die today after I do this and uh, I really think he'll be, he's going to be disappointed if he doesn't die today, so, but, um, I've had to die this past couple of weeks and I mean this past week and just letting go of him. Let's back up a little bit. <clears throat> About uh, eight or nine months ago in a meeting I heard you request prayer for Todd. Todd was not sick at that mm -hmm. time and uh, do you remember what you said and the prayer request that you made? It, I'll help you with it in case okay. you don't. You said that you had always prayed and asked God to not let Todd get AIDS, but that you were releasing Todd. You were taking any restrictions off of God because you knew that the primary thing that Todd needed was to know the Lord Jesus Christ as, as Savior and Lord. <clears throat> Do you remember as you request, made that prayer request? Uh, and oh. um, no, that was not, it, it was in April, um, yeah. the year before. I think I, I think what I shared is that um, I went through a period of about two years ago of really beginning to question God. Did you tell me you were going to change his life? Did you tell me he was going to be serving you? Did you tell me he was going to love you? And I came to a place where I I got to think, you know, I, I, it was like I said, God, I don't know if you told me all this or not, or if you let me believe all this to get me through the hard years of just being devastated over the fact he was a homosexual. And um, at that point, um, I had prayed. I had had this fear, even that that uh, he would be a homosexual. I mean, that he would get AIDS because I, I feared that if he got AIDS, that I couldn't be around my little granddaughter, or uh, that my friends would reject me, thinking that you know I I could just me taking care of him would they'd be afraid to be around me. And I had this fear that if he died, I couldn't take care of him and it would break my heart. But on the other hand, I had a fear that if I did take care of him, then it would just be, you know, not even being able to be around my granddaughters that I love so much. And I was driving along. This was a year before he was diagnosed as having AIDS. And this fear came to me and I said, oh God, for my sake, please don't let him get AIDS because God, it would break my heart if I couldn't take care of him uh, if, you know, if he got AIDS and it would break my heart if I couldn't be around my granddaughters. But then I said, but God, if the only way he can know you is to have AIDS, I ask you in the name of Jesus to give him AIDS. And, I'm, and this may sound terrible. My pastor says it was prophetic. He thinks it's prophetic. But the month prior to that, I just said, God, I don't know if you told me what you told me or if you allowed me to be deceived and just to get or let me believe these things to get me through the hard years. And, but God, if you know he's never going to love you, he's never going to he's never going to change. He's never going to love you. He's never going to come out of homosexuality. And only you know that, God, I ask you that if, if you know he's never going to repent, I ask you just to take him out. So, you know, 
this is this has been hard but it was like a letting go of him a year before he had it and uh, it really prepared my heart because when he got AIDS I wasn't surprised and it didn't I used to say God do whatever it takes I just ask you not to let him continue just do whatever it takes to save his soul and uh, but I said but God when you do it I just all I ask is that you let me know what you're doing where I won't panic <laughs> and uh, God really has poured out his grace on me through these months I mean it's been hard but it's also been a joy it's it's been a rejoicing to see you know 20 years of praying seeing God answer my prayers well Todd you grew up in a church and you've already acknowledged that you knew homosexuality was wrong and as a, an adult practicing homosexual when you were 19 in New York you yourself were accountable before God about what you were doing um, I know that your mother was praying for you at that time but tell me, is, is there anything else that you know of that parents can do in a situation such as this? Just love them and let them know they're there. That's about all they can do till you come to the place in your life where you're ready for deliverance and realize that Jesus Christ is all that matters. Oh, it can be there. Yeah, and there's not much you can say to him except that it took years and years and years of being in a church for me. And I tried and tried on my own until I accepted that. I need Jesus Christ and only him. There's nothing else. And do you think it takes a crisis, something like AIDS, to bring you to that realization? If the devil's got that big of a hold on you, yeah, I think it does. Hopefully it doesn't, but he'll, Jesus wants you. He'll do all he can to draw you near. It's a slow process for me. And looking back now, what would you say is your greatest regret? Peace for it. I didn't listen to my parents. My biggest. Well, Todd, seeing what the cost has been in your own life, what do you think teenagers and young people should be told, not just about homosexuality, but about sexual promiscuity and, and any lifestyle that is not lived in obedience to the Word of God? Oh, you're worth more than that. Don't let anybody take your body like that and just too cheap. Todd, it was last September, almost a year ago, that you were diagnosed as having AIDS. What was your reaction when you found out? I guess I was ooh, I wasn't real shocked. You weren't, weren't real shocked. I knew it happened sooner or later. It was just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. And a two or three, and, and when you found out, you went into the hospital at that time and almost died, didn't you? A couple weeks later. And yet, when you came out of the hospital that time, you still did not turn to the Lord, did you? Do you remember? No, I didn't turn to the Lord. And then uh, a couple of months later, you were at my house, and, and you know, right in the middle of tragedy, you find something to laugh about because you and your mom came to spend three or four days with me, and, and Jerry was following Todd around with a, a, a can of Lysol spraying behind him. You remember what you mm. said? You, you remember what you said? She was spraying telephones with Lysol, and said if that would get rid of the disease, and I'd be just pumped for it. That's right. And it wouldn't get rid of the disease, but um, your mom still was getting used to the fact that, um, that you had it and that it was here. But some, and, and at that time, you remember, I wanted you to stay at my house because I knew that the Lord was ministering to you there, but still, you had to leave. Why? I had to get back in my lifestyle. 
had to get back in your lifestyle, even though death was stalking every move that you made. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. At what point did you, and I don't mean date and time, but at what point did you uh, turn in your heart from your lifestyle and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart? It's actually, I've been in the hospital for um, a um, intestinal blockage uh -huh. and it made me a little sick and um, came home for 10 days and then uh, after that, I had a relapse, worse, and uh, just for about three days, four days, and threw my guts out. Mm -hmm. Just had diarrhea too. Mm -hmm. Constantly, three days. Didn't sleep for about a week, and uh, Linda came along to help mother and uh, first night we were together she spent the night changing my diapers let mom get some sleep and uh, we just I was delivered you experienced deliverance experienced I deliverance I realized that nothing was going to work and I oh, was going to keep me alive for Jesus Christ Amen Amen and you, because a friend someone whom you really didn't know before came and laid down her life for you, mm -hmm. stayed right here in the bedroom. And if I understand didn't what you me. said, you said that she changed her diapers all night. She didn't me. really know me. 